Hi everyone, it's Anthony, the producer here. Uh, just a quick heads up that there were a couple of technical difficulties this week. So uh, we are still ironing out those issues and should be all good for next week. Okay, enjoy the episode. What, so you, 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 your breakfast was that good, right? That took a picture you of it. took a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know where to show it. I mean, should we show it down the camera? Or, um, or show pop it up? Or... Show it. Yeah, yeah, just send it to we'll me. Send it, we'll put it in the, in the uh, I'll branding. Send, yeah, I'll send it to you now. Um, you're going to see a picture of my breakfast. It yep. was lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, I'll stick it in the, in the get it off your chest group. Yeah. Um, the breakfast that I had was, uh, it, was it was a bagel. It was a bagel with um, three. Oh, she's beautiful. Yeah. Three scrambled eggs. You can see yeah. it, right? Yeah, she's cute. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, cute. yeah. Um, and uh, smoked salmon, mm. 100 grams of that, uh, 70 grams of spinach, yep. all turned in together. A little bit of smoked paprika on the top because it just looked wrong yeah without you know you'll, you, you'll see it on the picture um but that was that was delicious mm. that was a quarter of my protein intake for the day i'm debating the Winner. the level of toastiness on your bagel though like how was it was it soft do you know what i mean can you Did see you it in the answer? picture yeah i mean I, I can see a little bit of brown if i'm toasting my bagel it's a it's a you know you like rate your toast right yeah it's about a three and a four in terms of like how brown it is. I'm happy for that because you can still chew it. Yeah. When you get further on, yeah, nah, it nah, nah. destroys the top of your mouth. Like an upper crust. Did you know that if you have diarrhea, that you should eat burnt toast? Like black. It's good. The enzymes in it digest. It, so <laughs> okay, like right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> are you preempting having diarrhea so you eat burnt toast and therefore you don't get it? Well, the first oh. thing <laughs> I'm going to go to if I do get diarrhea is diarrhea and, and burnt toast. Get the white bread. <laughs> done <laughs> that's oh, what's gonna happen we're two minutes in and what's happening <laughs> are we recording aren't we burnt yeah. toast and diarrhea <laughs> that's it listen that is a fun fact people will want to know that diarrhea light and burnt toast it does i mean i can't say it works I, I can't remember the last time i had that to be honest if your diarrhea was that bad and you were suffering that much would you put your diarrhea diarrhea light on your toast no you don't put it on your toast just drink it up <laughs> <laughs> If you're thinking straight, I can't think straight when I'm not well. So I'm kind of like suffering, to be totally honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not often ill, you know. Yeah. Touch wood. Yeah. Touch wood. Robust. I take take care of myself. You get eight hours sleep a night. That's always important. Right. How about Liz Trust then? I. When, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no way of intro. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Welcome back to the Get It Off Your Chest podcast. Mm. We did find a name for it in the end. Um, and it is about just getting things off your chest. We're going to be talking fitness, diet, lifestyle, but also male topics and a range of that with regards to getting things off our chests, mm. right? We've got Brad Veach, we've hey. got Anthony. Anthony, I wanted to say this. Mm. Do we have a nickname or do you have a shortened name? Anthony, or is it? have you ever been called anything different? Uh, I, was, I, was, well, I was called Tony in Tony. school, but... Do you like that? No. No. So Anthony's cool. Anthony's cool. But if you actually want to pronounce my name properly, it's Anthony. Oh, we had this conversation. Anthony, yeah. 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 No, 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 saying that though, my parents named me Anthony. Okay. And, you know, I spell my name Anthony. So, you mm. know, make your mind up. Like, do you, do you want me to be an Anthony or an Anthony? <laughs> Ants is one, but spelt with a Z. Right. Don't know why. A -T -A That's a film, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Film. yeah I love yeah, it. Anthony yeah. Z. Was yeah. it? DreamWorks first yes. ever one. Yes, it first? was DreamWorks. Yeah, yeah. I think they, are, they there's a German a German caterpillar thing called Heimlich. That's a Bug's Life. That's a Bug's Life. Yeah. No, we can't I'm, get them I'm confused. more ants no, than right. Bug's Life for me. Ants. Yeah. Ah, oh, come on, I grew, man. Up, I grew up watching ants more. Yeah, we're gonna fall out. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, Bug's so Life. It's um, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony. Anthony. But, but there you go. But I won't forget. But people call me Anthony, so I prefer Not Anthony. Happening. People call me Anthony. Well, you're getting Anthony. Thank that's, you very that's much. That's what you prefer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it gives me yeah. a bit of a twinge when people say it properly. So. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my housemate uh, is spelt, um, his name is spelt R-A-L-P-H. I bet I know how to pronounce his name. I bet you do. Rafe. Yeah, absolutely. How is that Rafe, though? I don't I mean, know. Sorry, Rafe. I don't know. Uh, Rafe Fines. Yeah, mm. he'll be listening in. Um, but yeah, Rafe Fines <laughs> is the same thing. Cheers, Rafe Fines, for listening. Cheers, mate. Yeah. We know you are. Thanks, Number man. one subscriber. Yeah, I live with Rafe Fines. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drop that one. Um, but yeah, uh, I j yeah, I don't know how you get Rafe. I'm going to find out. I'll find out. Yeah. And I'll let you know. Could be an Irish. Is he Irish? He's not. He's no. not Irish. Yeah, he's from Cambridge. Mm. Yeah. I don't think Cambridgeshire folk spell their names like, you know, like Kiva in 
in Ireland. It's in Ireland. Spelled yeah. Irish C- names, yeah. All right. Spell Kiva. K. Oh, no. Or C. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay. Trial and error. Kiva, yeah? Kiva. I'm going to go with uh, O. After the... After the C. The C. I. Okay. P. H. Kiva. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) Kiva. (laughs) That is my estimated guess. That is it. Go. You go. I believe... Do you know know what it is? I believe. I think, yeah. I think Anthony's got it. But I believe it is... C. C, damn it, fuck. Um, C. Oh, no, I'm doubting it. C. <laughs> no, I'm just going to go for it. C O A M. M. No, I'm struggling now. I'm struggling now. I, I bet I'm nearly right. P H, but I'm struggling. It's not far off my comp. <laughs> Straight out of comp. <laughs> Sorry, Kiva. Uh, Sorry. If you, if you say Kialma, huh? which is how when you read it, yes. you think it's. I think, see, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I think it's C A I. Yeah. No, C I A. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's the police <laughs> force. Uh, but it is basically it? A, a ends in M H E, I'm pretty sure. M H E. C A I O M H E. No, oh. something like that. Right, we've got, we've got. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. C. Yeah. A. Yeah. O. I. Three vowels in a row. <laughs> right? M H E. M H E, I was right. The, the yeah. You M-H-E. were very close. Yeah, yeah. You were very close. C A O I M H E. It's Kiva. I think M H is quite profound in like Irish names. I, I, I know a friend who's called Neve, Neve? And, and that is M H as well. How does she start the start of that name? Uh, I believe it's N I A. M-H. Yeah. Eve. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. might be wrong. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Which is kind of why Anthony would have gone CIA. Yeah. M-H. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fair. There we go. No. Sorry, so that was a bit either. of a side, side track, anyway. I like it. A side, track, a side track, you know, when you side entrance into something. Yeah. <laughs> like, but from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> from the top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Listen, I've got a picture like... of my favourite sauce in my phone and Kiva's <laughs> spelt like this. <laughs> Welcome to episode two. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Come on, come on. All right. The main thing that I probably wanted to bring to the table today was obviously what happened in the news yesterday was Liz Truss resigning mm. as prime minister. Now, I don't know about you, but that has to be the shortest amount of time anyone of importance has been like in rain or anything like that. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. so I actually <laughs> I think um, it's an absolute joke, to be honest. I yeah. actually, I sat there this morning for my breakfast and yeah, my yeah. morning paper, which I bought specifically for the podcast. Um, and uh, nice one. Check this out. Yeah, go. She comes out on top as shortest serving prime minister, mm. which I think we knew anyway. Yeah. Now, her 44 days in number 10 make Liz the shortest serving UK prime minister in history. The previous holder of the unwelcome title was Tory, George Canning. Never Tory. Who saw, who served, who served for 119 days in 1827 before dying from pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he, yeah, wasn't he like, wasn't he quite young? Uh, he was uh, 57. Oh, no, I'm thinking of someone else then. I mean, Related. 57 in 1827 is... Quite old, I'd say. Quite old. Yeah, I was going to say he had a good innings so. at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the second longest serving. Were people he, like beheading people at that time still? Uh, I don't know my history that well. I don't know if they beheaded him because he had pneumonia. No, well, you know, you can't have someone of importance. I mean, they were probably <laughs> doing that at the start of COVID <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, I mean, 45 days, that, that's a very specific number, isn't it? But, like, at the same time, what do you think lasts longer than 45 days? I know that there was, uh, the, there was a story about the lettuce trying to... Um, there was like a streaming profile. I think it was like the Daily Mail or something like that. I don't know if it was the Sun or anything like that. Um, but they were saying like, what's going to last longer, lettuce, uh, uh, this bowl of lettuce or Liz Trust? And it turned out that the lettuce won. They had a party for it yesterday. They yeah. decorated the lettuce up. They stuck some eyes on it. <laughs> and, and, and the lettuce was happy to to have out. Uh, what? Yeah, it was happy. It was happy to have out. out Would, you know, I'd lived, be happy if I had out- outlived Liz Trust's reign as 
Prime Minister, where do we go? What do we do? What do we do from Who here? Who do we have as Prime Minister next? Ideally and... Right, there's two trains of thought with this. Personally, I think they just need to reinstate someone real quick. Probably not Boris, but like probably Rishi, right? Sure. Um, sure. Away from the topic of that, I just think that a general election is needed. Absolutely. Right? Because they can't make up their minds and the things like there's so much like... There's no stable, uh, there's no stability at the moment at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I just think that we just need to come to a complete reset, complete standstill, and just go from there. And then maybe, even if it's half the population over the other half, at least we have a, a, a unified kind of standing of going. This is what we're going to do for the foreseeable future because sure. at the moment it's quite embarrassing. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? We look an embarrassment <laughs> to the rest of the world. We yeah. do. Um, you know, not the population of the UK, but the UK government. At the moment, it's up in arms. Everybody's kicking off about it. And yeah, it needs, it needs sorting. If you could have one person in the world to be your favorite prime minister. You mean who's been prime minister before? Or like no. Anyone. Anyone, anywhere, your favorite person. Who'd be fun? Dead, <laughs> dead or alive? Dead or alive. Yes. Dead yes. or alive. I Changes like it. it. Yeah, Who was on. the first that person that came to your head dead or alive then? Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was. Oh, no, that's no, not no. what I want. That's not what no. I want. I don't want that. Well, mine was Michael Jackson, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> two fantastic choices to lead a country. I don't know why, but um, to answer your question thoroughly, after bypassing uh, Michael Jackson um, and Hitler, um, oh God, fuck, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, this is such a short. Like, I'm just getting so many people in my head. I mean, Dale Winton just went through my head. That's not what? Right. <laughs> what? It just, it just like, passed through my head. I'm trying to, you know when you're just, like, flashing your head, like, people? Adolf Hitler, I'm Michael Jackson, dead people. Dale Winton. <laughs> I've never had that shopping list in my life. <laughs> um, oh, God. Who's, you know what? I would have, I, it's going to sound, like, really, like, typical, right? But it's, I would have Barack Obama. Yes. I would. I really would. That's great. I think he was a great leader. Great choice. Yeah, you know, not, not just about the race and equality and that kind of thing. And the moment of that happening, I do think gen genuinely, genuinely over that time, from an outside looking in, he seemed like a really great leader and someone that you could get on board with. Now, there's, there's never going to be someone that you go down the line and agree with everything, especially as someone who's like a politician or a leader. And he's not even British, but... <laughs> Better than Dale Winton and Michael Jackson for me. So. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Um, hmm. I'm spitballing here. I'm, my my mind is racing. I can I can go. Names are flying past my head. Um, yeah, this is what happened. That's what Dale Winton came in. Gee, he did. I've got Mika. Mika, <laughs> the singer. Yeah. I could be brown, I, I could be, be blue, blue, I could be violet, a sky, I could be Tory, I could be Labour, I could be anything you like. There you go. Watch him have a campaign. There too, you go. In yeah. the general election. Mika. It's going to happen. Please run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll campaign for you. So. <laughs> That's brilliant. Great. I, could be, I could be Tory, I could be Labour, I could be anything you like. Yeah. You're quick, you're, you're quick like that, aren't you? Uh, I, think. I actually Googled what lasts longer than 45 days. Do you want to hear the list? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So here is uh, what we have so far. We have Kim Kardashian's, uh, Kim Kardashian's marriage, okay. time between haircuts, <laughs> no more than two full moons, trapped Chilean miners. <laughs> no, oh, no. No, no, mm, no. That's... <laughs> I, right, while we're on that, just quickly, um, yeah. I, I know this from a famous comedian. I, I sat and watched this. One of, one of the trapped Chilean miners is banned from a karaoke bar. What? <laughs> right. Why right. do you know that? Right. Uh, he's banned from a karaoke bar. Um, when he came out the mining, at some point after that, he went to a karaoke bar, got kicked out, and now he's barred. Um, there you go. Fun fact. To be fair, I bet he's living his best life, and he went a bit too hard, and he got kicked out yeah. after, you know, probably losing his life. Nearly losing his life. Didn't lose his life. <laughs> anyway, your Christmas tree lasts longer than 45 days. Wow. Believe it or not, mine's still in the back garden. It's summer of 2022. Anthony has seen it. Hey, see, good. And also, do you know, they go up fast in flames. Yeah. Oh. Christmas, dead Christmas trees. Yeah. Don't, I mean, if you want to have a fire, great. Bonfire night. That's what yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but, it's soon. But don't accidentally light it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> You've done it. Just a PSA. Um, <laughs> no, I've, not, I've, I've used it as like kindling, yeah. you know, um, but they... Kindling 
for your house. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> no, no, just very, very dangerous. Be wow. careful. A single oil, oil change, a single college semester, uh, Lindsay Lohan's time in rehab, um, time to get refund at most retailers, most kitchens of liquor in my kitchen. Yeah, it's like irrelevant really, but it's just a bit of a joke. The Chilean miners is probably not the best joke in the world, but yeah, we'll read it out. I like it. Okay, I'm looking at... <clears throat> I'm looking at TV personalities and people that are nice. Yeah. People that are really nice and Don't everybody want. loves. Um, I know there's been a bit of conspiracy surrounding Philip and Holly. You can't have them both. You can't have them both. Um, Holly Willoughby. Yeah, I was going to say. Holly pick, Willoughby. Pick right. <laughs> Holly, Holly Willoughby. Please run. I think that would I ruin her. That would ruin her though. That tarn- the thing about personalities is that TV personalities, you don't want to tarnish their like reputation. Imagine like Anton Deck running for parliament. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of love it, but at the same time, it would just like show yeah. like a negative side to them. I well, absolutely. And you look at Donald Trump and <laughs> exactly what happened there. Yeah. Um, I don't think it could go further wrong than, than Trump. Um, right. What about Russell Brand? Hey. That's hey, a good hey. show, to be fair. Now we're on to something. It's not, a bad, it's not a bad show. Now we're cooking on... Yeah. I'd like to see that. Someone's a bit polarizing, a bit outspoken, but at the same time... He knows. The, a lot of the time he knows his shit. He does, he does, he knows. I, I, I follow him on, yeah. on the socials and, and I have a little listen to what he's got to say and it's good stuff. Yeah. It is good stuff and it is stuff that we go, yes, absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah of course. Why aren't they doing that? Why yeah. aren't they doing that? Uh, yeah, I think a brilliant, what a brilliant suggestion. Yeah. I think, I think he's, he's, just, he's just one of those people that, obviously he's a celebrity, mm-hmm. um, but, and he's kind of, but he's been through it all. Yeah. I mean, he's been through everything. Yes. He's started, you know, drug addict, every, every drug. He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he right, was, yeah. yeah, he was. And uh, then, he had uh, sex addiction as well, didn't he? Sex addiction. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Addictive and, yeah. personalities, isn't it? Like, if you're addicted to one thing, you replace it with another. Absolutely, with another, yeah. Or yeah. gain another. Yeah. 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 And he's a, I feel like he's the kind of person that actually, he's come from sort of nothing, then had all yeah. the fame and the success, and has, you know, outwardly said, going to try and step away from what all that brings because you know it brings it brings access to the drugs that he could probably get it's, yeah. it's, it's everything in excess isn't it really whereas i think uh, uh, some of his good points are i don't know if you saw that really famous uh interview with jeremy paxman he did an interview with him and he said and jeremy probably paxman not. basically just said so what what you know what do we need what what does the country need and russell brand basically said we need a, a full-on revolution Mm. Like an actual go back to bare bones. A Che Guevara start, revolution. Yeah, start yeah, over yeah. again. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy when you're talking about politics to, it's hard to say, to stay impartial, isn't it? Because yeah. you, you, don't, you don't want to, you know, yeah, you could say, yeah, let's just get another Tory leader in there and, um, and uh, see how they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole revolution thing and, you know, that potentially happening, I think... The way that I look at it is, is, is with the same people in power or the same sort of parties in power, they're often trying to just cover up cover rooms up someone else's all the mistakes, time, cover yeah. up plasters all the time. And at the end, you end up with this big heap of, of something that really, really does need fixing with all these plasters on it, like a really, really, really old car. So therefore, I'd be an advocate of a, of a revolution, of a new start, of a new... I think that's a kind really that's a really like nice analogy in the sense that you, it's kind of like you know fixing an old car almost, and the mm. old car is this country. Yeah. You know, it, you know the thing about a revolution, probably why it hasn't happened yet, or it probably won't happen in the near future, is because we can't afford for some reason the world would go into chaos if we were to stand still. However, we we have stood still at points in over the last few years, and. To be honest, a lot of things came out of it in in a good manner. Some some things definitely bad, but it definitely gave us time to like rethink and actually kind of transition into a new age almost. When it comes to pol- uh, politics, I'm quite apolitical. I'll be honest. I I can't say I know enough or have a genuine interest enough to know that I have a strong feeling of being right or left. If yeah. I'm being honest, but my personality trait means that. I prefer that there's equality for everyone. Um, everyone has a fair say. And the way that things are at the moment, I just feel like there's going to be a, a, a distance between that gap. Like there's a massive gap yeah, yeah. In, in there. And I just think if we're going to have a new prime minister, it has to be about maybe correcting that gap to make a better country. 
Sure, you know? sure. I know one of the things that Liz um, Truss said in her resignation yesterday was um, in her short time in power that she'd, uh, one of the things she said she'd sorted or solved mm. was the energy bills crisis. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I don't think she solved it, but I don't think it could have got any worse. And therefore, she reduced it a little bit and made us all go, oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. But that was it. I mean, you stand there and you say, I solved the energy bills. You didn't solve the energy bills crisis. You, you reduced our bills for, or you froze our bills yeah. for the next sort of segment of our lives. Mm. Um, it's just nice to not hear someone say, oh, just whack on another jumper. Yeah. Or, you know, boil, yeah. the, boil the kettle to have a bath. Exactly. Like, just ridiculous... Comments. Yeah. Trump buy, but there was something about a kettle, wasn't it? It's yeah. the Boris like, thing. Buy, buy a kettle, um, and it's going to cost you twenty pounds, but that's going to save you money or something that's like it. that. It so went something. Ten pound a year. Yeah. Ten pound a year. It'll save you if you buy yeah. like an energy efficient. If you, uh, so if you, if you, uh, if you buy, if you, so what you need to do is buy a new kettle, and what you do is you save yourself uh, tw- twenty pounds. If you twenty pounds for a kettle, uh, uh, you save yourself over the course of four years. You save yourself. Uh, Ten pounds a year, and therefore you save so twenty pounds in total over four years. Ridiculous! Absolute amazing. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Someone who's is actually really intelligent, superly intelligent, right? Mm. And can come up with such shit. In- Somebody's told him to say that. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. That's what politics is. They're the spokesmen. They're the spokesmen or spokeswomen. You know, they're the front. They're the front people. Mm-hmm. There's. Tons of advisors behind them telling them what they exactly they need to say and do. Sure. And I just, uh, why not pick somebody that's so truthful, like Russell Brandon, who can do it for themselves and yeah. say, this is what we actually need and not go, tell them that. Go on, tell them that. Mm. Go out and tell them that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Ant and Deck on Saturday Night Takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. It would just say be, that. It would be really nice to have someone, you know, someone who hasn't gone to Eton, mm. who hasn't had everything sort of put on a plate for them growing mm. up. There's some members of parliament who have incredibly good points mm. and it all, you know, you, you've seen it, you've seen the videos in the house of commons where they're talking about really, really important stuff. Yeah. And then most of the members of parliament are asleep. Yeah. Or there's like, 10 of, there's like 10 of them in there and you've got someone talking about, I don't know, um, pop kids, in, yeah, bottom, school meals, bottom, school meals on the kids' school meals, whatever. Yeah, but, but why is that? Why is it? Why is it so glossed over in that respect? Because there's so many important issues. Like, like you said, we've seen them. We've seen them on Twitter. Them going viral, especially over the last couple of years. Definitely, they've they've revealed so much more co- uh, coverage in the House of Commons nowadays, where people are talking openly about really important subjects that actually matter to a lot of us in this yeah, country. Yeah, and yet they never really come to surface. Really, I genuinely think. I genuinely think it's because of what they have in that. In, in Parliament, yeah. everybody in Parliament does have a lot of these things that a lot of the common household are struggling with. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the rise in heating and, and free school meals and the things that everybody, that, you know, the general household needs. But in Parliament, they, they're, they're all right. They're on, we've seen a menu, we've seen a menu of, of the stuff in Parliament and they're getting meals for, like, pen, pittance. Yeah. Pittance against against people having to do a weekly food shop, which has shot up four times in the last three or four years. And, and so therefore, it's not on the list of their concerns. They're looking at a bigger picture and saying, let's make this country as much money as we can. But that money's not getting filtered down to the families and everybody that needs it. Mm. You know, they will look after the NHS, I think. I think because, Has to, always. because it's one of the biggest things and that would be an absolute uproar if they didn't. I mean, if, if, if that were to fall, I mean, what else would there be? To stay here for yeah exactly. Do you know what I mean like no, you're so it's, true. It's I agree, hundred percent. I think mm. that point you've just made is really really important because they don't discuss things that don't affect them, and if they when they do Precisely. when they do discuss those things, it's a couple of members of parliament just having a chat while everyone else is having a sleep. You know, I, I I'm really bad with names, but there's a there's a there's a politician. He's an older gentleman, and he's been kicked out of. The, uh, Houses of Parliament, like a lot, because he's really <laughs> outspoken. I love it. I, the, I, uh, I know which I one you mean. He's a, a, yeah, he's got a bit. Uh, try and find long, a picture. Long, yeah, yeah. I, I know you mean. And he's brilliant. And um, yeah, but the, I, I think that's what it is. I think I think there aren't enough members of Parliament who actually represent the everyday person. Yeah, exactly. Whereas you know you do have these politicians who who go to Eton and who do 
I'm from Oxford. Like mm. I'm I'm part I'm not part of it because I'm not a politician and I don't you know would never claim to be one of them. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Sat in the back. <laughs> podcast. I love you as a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I love you as a politician. But what, I'm, but what I mean is, like, I've I've actually seen, you know, the people going to the you know, the colleges and stuff, and it's yeah. just a bit. It's a bit mind blowing, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there just needs to be better representation across the board. Yeah, just I think representation. So. For, I, think, I think that's yeah. the next. I think that's the next step, isn't it? Is just trying to increase that mm-hmm. before even major things are actually or whatever people would consider minor things get recognized on a more granular level. Absolutely. So that people Absolutely. Can, yeah. 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 So All Russell right. Brand then, yeah? Yeah, Russell Brand. Russell Brand wins. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Absolutely. Great. Right. Going into uh, another subject, bringing it around to maybe a fitness-based topic or something like that. Um, we're drinking alcohol. Yes. Right? Yeah. We are drinking a little bit. Not doing, not going crazy, are we? But yeah. uh Talk me through this. This it's not a beer, is it? It's a cider. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, what is it called again, Brad? It is. It's a slider. Now, now, Brewdog has collaborated with uh, somebody in the local area, Hawkins, I believe. Um, Hawkins Slider. Mm. Um, there was a little video on the Brewdog page that I watched the other day, mm-hmm. um, and since turning up and meeting Anthony this morning, and then meeting you, unfortunately, uh, we yeah we we opted for the Hawkins Slider, yeah. which is is brewed. It says Waterloo on the board, so I'm yep. guessing locally. Um, <clears throat> and we've opted for a cider today rather than a lager. Yeah. I don't know actually, calorifically, what we're looking at. I suspect it might be lower. I haven't checked my fitness pal yet. I mean, maybe get back to me on that. I might tr- try and check and see if we can find it. But yeah. um, essentially, I suspect that it's not as heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I might be completely wrong. Probably there's more While sugar you, in it, though, maybe. Yeah, that's I would true. think that's so. Yeah, yeah. Fruit, While you do do it, that, yeah. I'll I'll talk you through. I mean, yesterday I had I had two thousand two hundred calories to eat, yeah. uh, to digest, take on board, and by the end of the day, I was on about one one seven one eight. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was looking at about four five hundred calories left to go. One thousand seven hundred calories. Is that what you're saying? That's yeah, one thousand seven hundred yeah. I had consumed, right? And I had two thousand two hundred. Is my goal. Um, based on my weight and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had about 500 calories left. And one of the lads at work said, uh, do you, you want to go for a pint tonight? And it, immediately I was like, nah, I'm put, I'm put that off. I'm put that off because I want to go home. I want to s- conserve my calories for maybe something to eat when I get in and then nip into bed and go. Mm-hmm. However, I had hit my protein goal mm-hmm. for the day. And other than that, it's just hit my calories. And, and, and you know, we can either maintain weight or at the moment, I'm in a sort of a bit of a bulking phase yeah, after yeah. the 12 weeks that we've just gone through. Mm-hmm. And I, I in turn said, yeah, yeah, I'll go to the pub. I'll yeah. go to the pub. And what I did do, I went to the pub and I had um, three pints, which was, you know, I'll admit it was 60 calories over my allowance, but I had three pints last night. And, and you know, just backing up what I said last week, in order to be able to live a fully sort of um, social life as well as sort of doing the gym stuff, mm. Three beers at the pub were absolutely fine last night. Yeah, I mean, when you say like 60 calories over your limit, I think a lot of people do get bogged down in terms of when someone is given a number, i.e. like in my coaching uh, business, when I get a new client, I give them a calorie range, right? So for example, they have like, I always say 10% under or over with regards to what calories there are. So for example, for you, 10% of that would be 2,400 to 2,000. Really, if your if your middle calories are two thousand two hundred, if you were to ten percent give or take of there, mm-hmm. then you have that range to kind of play with. That gives them so much more flexibility. Yeah, so yeah, you go over, you try and hit your target, but if you're over or under by that, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Further on from that, as well, a great tactic to use for calorie counting as well is actually not just focusing on it in during the day. So you just focus on a whole week's worth amount of calories. So you would take your number and times that by seven. Mm-hmm. That way, you can manipulate the amount of calories that you would have over the course of the week. Say, for example, you're having a drink at the mill or having a drink at the pub or whatever that is, you can then actually take your complete number, take it down so that some days of the week, say Monday to Thursday, you're going to eat much under that under that number. Say, for example, it could be like 1,800. Yeah. But then for the rest of the week, you could have more, you know? And when it comes to alcohol, you absolutely can drink alcohol um, yeah. and still be able to stick to your training and your diet yeah. you know there are going to be side effects sometimes you're not going to feel like amazing or a hundred a million dollars going into the gym the next day if you've had a few pints here and there mm-hmm. but 
you can still technically do it, you know? So realistically, I could look at my my plan for the week and say, instead of going 2,200 a, uh, a day, mm. we're looking at, uh, what's that, 15,400 for the week. Quick maths, yeah. Way! Check that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's like 15,400 for the week. Yeah. Like um, So therefore, if I am at a calorie surplus one day and then be a calorie deficit, are they the same thing? Deficit yeah, and no, surplus? No. So a deficit is below your maintenance and surplus is above your above. maintenance. Above. Perfect. Yeah. I thought I knew what I meant. Yeah. Um, so then if I'm at a surplus one day, I could be a deficit the next day and stuff like that. And yeah. and, and over the course of a week, if I, I could look at, yeah, 15,400, 15, 15,400. As long as you're not in a surplus for throughout the whole week and your goal is to be in a deficit, you know, mm. um, then, yeah, you can absolutely be in a, a surplus certain days yeah. and you can be at maintenance certain days, yeah. provided that overall, the course of the week, we gauge how much, how many calories you consume over the course of a week, not a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, popular question. Okay. I think this is uh, probably the most popular question that yeah. might get asked in fitness. And I Go think, on. what alcohol can I consume that's the healthiest, that's the best for me, that... That, that I could go and have a few drinks on a night out. You know, we're talking about spreading the calories over the week and stuff like that and being in a, in a deficit some days to make up for the fact that you might want to go out of on a Wednesday or on a mm. Saturday. Or it, it depends on your lifestyle. It depends on what kind of drinks you firstly enjoy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm someone who can drink pretty much any drink out there except for Negronis and Strongbow because I've had hangovers, hangovers from there and I never want to relift them again. Is that, is that mixed? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like death. I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. <laughs> no, no way. But essentially, uh, yeah, uh, first and foremost, if you like to go to the pub rather than going to a bar, I'm not going to say that you, and you drink beer, for example, I'm not going to say to you that you should drink, um, I don't know, like liquor at a pub compared to, Drink, you know, traditionally, if you go into a bar and there's cocktails and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you're more likely not going to drink beer all the time at a bar. You're going to drink something a bit short or, yeah. you know, like, a, you know, your, your, your rums, your spirits and all that kind of stuff. So essentially, what I would suggest most times is what is going to give you the best bang for your buck. Now, typically, if you drink beer, I would highly suggest that on a night out, provided that you're not getting wasted, that if you're going to go out and have a nice night, but still you know, stick to your targets. No more than four drinks that night, really. It's four pints we're talking. That's enough yeah. for a lot of people, to be to be honest, with regards to just being able to, A, probably go over their calories a little bit or stick to their calories to a certain degree, and B, still be able to have a good time and still be able to socialize. If you go past that number, then forget about it. Essentially, you're drinking to get drunk and you're going to have a good time anyway, regardless, but you're not necessarily focusing on your fitness goals. Now, Two to four drinks typically for most individuals will be absolutely fine. The same can be applied to um, going to a bar or if you don't drink beer or drink cider or anything like that and you want to focus on your lighter spirits. Spirits typically are going to be lower in calories. Cool. Which is why I refer to getting the most bang for your buck. So if you are really, really focused in on having a good time, but you want to drink, but you, you don't want to necessarily overspill on calories, but you don't want to necessarily get pissed either. Then essentially you want to actually focus in on spirits like your rums, your cognacs, your, your, your gins, um, your whiskeys and stuff like that. That is genuinely what is going to keep you on the straight and narrow with regards to hitting your calorie target over the course of the time. And ideally with a zero mixer. With a, yeah, with know, a zero mixer. Yeah. Definitely. I always say like diet Coke, diet lemonade, uh, slim line tonic, all that kind of stuff realistically yeah. that's that's something that you could definitely stick to but i like my beer i do like to drink a beer if i'm going to do that then i set myself a two to four drink rule most of the time sure if i'm not going wild sure you know that's just something that i think a lot of people can focus in on is that if they are drinking just make sure that you set a limit for yourself because a lot of the times you can be in the moment and you go fuck it you know, the, the classic fuck it button is hit. It's been you, done yeah, many a time. It's been done many, many a time. time. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you can kind of fall off the bandwagon very, very quickly. But then the knock-on effects for that, for drinking like over the limit almost, would be what happens the, the next day. day. Some, Some people, people think that, that they can, can go into uh, a, a night, night out or an evening and, and have a few drinks and, and think that the next day is going to be absolutely fine when, when, and they're trying to train the next day or even stick to their diet the next day. A lot of the time, 90% of the time, it doesn't happen. 
that's, that's because, because they're hungover and their, hungover and their, and their energy, energy and, and their cravings are all out of whack. whack. So, so I would always say, just make sure that you focus in on, just focus on those limits. limits. You know independently what those limits are. You know if you are thinking about tracking your calories or tracking your nutrition in that respect as well, you know how many calories you should have. I trust you to actually make that decision prior to going out so that you go and stick to those limits. Yeah, I think planning is the best is the best way. You know, I, I just aside from alcohol, I mean, last... Uh, a couple of days ago, I, I, I laid in bed for the night and went, right, what's in my fridge? What have I got meal prepped and what can I put into the system and figure it out? It took all, it took all of about uh, five minutes for me to go, one of them, one of them, some of that, bit of that, slice of that, slice of islands, quiche, and off we go. And, and like, and, and at the end of the next day, I, 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 I'd, I'd done it all. I didn't have to log anything, and it was as easy as that. I still had 300 calories left, and I could have had a pint at the pub. Mm-hmm. I could have had a pint at the pub with my mates, and, but instead I went home and had a couple of little cake bars, and we were good. Yeah, yeah I always get clients, or I always ask people to make sure that they, if they're using MyFitnessPal or a tracking tool like MyFitnessPal, that they track the day before rather than track throughout the day. Yeah. So make sure that they track... 80% of their calories and their protein, and their protein targets, targets, making sure that that, that is met, preferably that most of their protein targets are met throughout that time, so that they have 20% left over to then either save it or spend it. And if they can save it for, them, for another day, right. Or if they want to spend it like you did, going to a pub, for example, and having a drink, then absolutely you can do that too. But if the main thing is actually planning ahead and, and that's, that's where people, people most people fall off is because, because they don't actually plan ahead of time if you can plan ahead of time you can wake up knowing exactly what you're going to be having and then you can be flexible throughout the day and that's where people mess up okay so yeah when i when i was a kid and i wasn't counting my calories that, <laughs> yeah there i was oh i started well didn't it? it's an alcohol <laughs> story when i was a kid and i started yeah, yeah. all right <laughs> just for the record i was i was 14 maybe 15 yeah. i had a girlfriend at the time and, uh, and me and my girlfriend decided we wanted to go on holiday, but being 14, 15 years age, you can't do that. Mm. You have to go with an adult. Mm. Cool. So my cousin, who was about 22, 23, she decided that she'd come with us with a mate. Mm-hmm. And we were going to go to Torre Vieja in Spain. Perfect. They got a twin room and we got a double room. Mm-hmm. Um, and about six weeks before the holiday, mm-hmm. me and my girlfriend split up. Um, what do we do? Mom said... Why don't you take your nan on holiday? Why don't you take your nan to Torre Vieja? She'd love it. Mm. All right. So I sat down with Nan. She fancy come to Torre Vieja? And she was like, oh, I'd love it. Yeah, yeah, let's go. So me and my nan went to Torre Vieja. We switched the bedrooms around. I was in the twin room with my nan. And then me, my cousin and a friend were in the, the double. And the first night we left our apartment. There was a lovely little bar over the way. Um, sort of neon lights up. And you, you, quite stereotypical sort of fun Spanish bar mm. um, or bar in Spain, English come Spanish. And they had these squashed frogs on the menu. I took 150 euros with me spending money and a little Alcatel flip up phone with 10 pound credit on it. So I could text my mum in case of emergencies. And uh, we're sitting in this bar and uh, we, uh, I, the drinks kind of get out of hand. I'm 14, 15 years old. Here we are um, getting these rounds of squashed frogs in with me now. Um, my cousin and a friend said they're going to go to bed. They want to get to the beach early the next day. So it was me and my nan. And we started talking to this family that was sat with us. Mm. Um, they were a lovely family, really lovely family. And, uh, and, and the drinks carried on. And nan went to bed. And I stayed there with this family that was staying in the apartment next door. And I was buying them squashed frogs. I was like, I'm the wheeler dealer here. I am the 14-year-old wheeler dealer here. I'm the man in charge. Um, we... We drank a lot. I spent my spending money and I was so, so drunk and I left them and I went back to the apartment. Now, I couldn't get in because it was all locked. So I had to right. climb over the wall, climbed over the wall into the apartment and into me twin bed with my nan. Then the rest of it is a blur. I woke up in the morning and I look over. Nan's not there. She's Nan's gone. gone. She's woken up. She's left. Yeah. The bed sheets are gone. What, with you on the bed? So I'm like, on, just a, well, we're in the twin reveal. room. We're in the twin room. I'm in this side. My bed sheets are not gone. Okay. Nan's bed sheets are gone. Okay. Oh, God. This is strange. Yeah. Okay. So I get out of bed and I walk into the bathroom. 
I'm looking in the bath, and there's Daz on the on the on the on the bath. Daz, which is in the bath as well, and all the bed sheets are in the bath. I was like, I hope my nan's all right. Oh, God. oh, right. So I open up the Alcatel phone. I've got three missed calls from my mum. Beating. Yeah, you're shitting yourself. I mean, that's probably what you did, but you're shitting yourself again. Yeah. Hiya, mum. You all right? What the hell did you do? What? What? You got in last night. Right. So I'll tell you it from what mum told me. I, I got into bed in the twin beds and, and, and I woke up about 20 minutes after that. I stood over my nan and I went, nan, I'm going to be sick. And I was sick. No. You were sick on your nan? Yes. On her. Mm. On her what? <laughs> on her face. Oh, God. On her neck. And on on the on the, on the, <laughs> and face, her and neck. the bed and the bed and <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 you threw up on your nan yep. on her face yep. her neck and her pillow so yep. just like top heavy yeah not a body just yeah <laughs> I, I I mean I stood up to warn her and and in How turn in t- uh, half a second <laughs> <laughs> she jumped out of bed she jumped out of bed she went into the bathroom and she sucked herself out and she put all the bed sheets in there and she slept on a on an unmade bed the whole night and she was down at the beach with my cousin and a friend um and my mum said i i seriously suggest you phone her up and apologize i phoned her up apologized you know uh my cousin and a friend saw the funny side nan was a bit angry with me for a couple of days uh yeah that <laughs> and that's that's that <laughs> that is that story don't throw up on your nan, kids. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh. There you go. The, the worst thing I ever did to my nan was... Uh, <laughs> 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 Where are we going with this? But it did. It popped into my head. I use... Uh, the worst thing I ever did to my, to my nan, nan was... <laughs> of the week. Um, <laughs> of the week? The week? Yeah. Um, I talked to her with my backside um, from Ace Ventura. You ever watch Ace Ventura? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I bent over it and I was like talking to her, talking to her like that for the whole evening. And she was like, you will not believe what your son is doing. <laughs> oh my God. I'll never forget that. I think I was about like six years old. <laughs> Still not worse than throwing up on your nan. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what our nans were subjected oh. to. I already told you last week, they she get... made the worst beef. <laughs> Dry. Dry. That's why I was sick on it. <laughs> <laughs> you had the beef the night before. Oh my god! So that's two stories that you've come up with two weeks consecutively, both involving sick. Yeah. Last yeah. week was on the tube. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And this it. week is as a theme on your nan's face. I'm just so going to check my notes. Brad's and check the rest sick of them. Theme, yeah. None of them. Is, none of them are. Uh... Brad's sick story of the week. Sick story of the week. <laughs> <laughs> the sick story oh, of the week. <laughs> we'll we'll work on the the theme tune coming up later. What are your thoughts on resistance bands, or is that something you don't want to talk about because it's an industry secret? Or something? Oh, industry secret. No, no, it's totally fine. I mean, essentially, nothing beats. For body composition change, nothing beats lifting heavy weight or heavy resistance, right? Now, resistance can abs- uh, can come in the form of resistance bands. Um, but I think the vast majority of uh, people out there in, in gen pop probably underuse it, under underestimate the power of it, or they misuse it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because realistically, you can train to a certain resistance with resistance bands for a short period of time, but then eventually you're going to graduate your body strength to be able to need a greater stress on the body. You know? And in in my 13th week of this regime right now, yeah, yeah. just for the record, Josh is going to hate me for this. The last 12 weeks I have, I have grown. I have felt amazing. I felt brilliant. Mm-hmm. And this week we started, you know, once you get past your 12 weeks, <laughs> Josh will step up the game. We will step up the game. Um, I'll just let you know, I struggle to get out of this chair, <laughs> right? Today, yesterday, and the day before, um, I'd started a new regime with Josh uh, or a new part of, of, of getting bigger, getting better, getting where I want to be. Mm. And um, yeah, so I have learned that actually this week, um, I'll bet everything hurts, um, is, is that, is that um, it's called, it's called muscle in tension or tension in mechanical mechanical tension yeah mechanical tension so so, so the way that we're doing the weights are one in we hold for one and then we release slowly after three yeah we're focusing on tempo 
So for my money, mm -hmm. I think the fit, the resistance bands really fucking hurt. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, like after, if you keep using that, that, that tension to go. But it's, it, an, it's not what you use, it's how you use it, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, resistance bands do Woo! Have a, yeah, drop that clanger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it has its place, but I would always vouch for people to focus their energy still on lifting weights, um, free weights, and even, you know, machines and stuff like that, because then you can manipulate the, the resistance at a further way. Resistance bands, for example, is great for like a body weight exercise. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you could strap it behind you, um, uh, like doing a press up or something like that, or mm -hmm. you could put it overhead and do overhead press, or you could use it as a squat or lunges and stuff like that. It's a very versatile bit of equipment, yeah, it's isn't very it? Very versatile. And if you're yeah. traveling and you have no gym membership or anything like that, then fine, albeit like go for it. And you can lose, you can drop a lot of body fat focusing on a, a really strength regime, just focusing on body weight exercises and and um, resistance bands. It's definitely doable. Mm. That said, though, eventually, if you're going to take it further, especially for muscle building, if you're going to build muscle, then it's probably not my go-to thing that I would probably recommend. Sure. Eventually, you're just going to need to lift weights. If you just want to lose fat and actually just maintain your shape a little bit, then yeah, it can be fine. But I still would say that weights is probably greater than resistance bands, personally. Josh, you... Uh, not so, not so recently a dad, but you are a, a new dad. Yeah, you yeah. Say. Um, do you have any advice for people who are either new dads or have been, uh, who are just starting their, their, their journey to, um, to, um, sort of, uh, their up in their game in their terms of their lifestyle and in, in their, in their, their fitness. Mm. Do you have any advice for people who, I don't know, maybe are either, nervous about starting a regime because they just genuinely cannot see where they have time to even yeah. lift the weight or even go to the gym to get a membership. Um, do you have any advice for people who are, one, starting out, and two, who maybe are in the midst of their workout regime and, and are struggling a little bit? Yeah. I mean, a little bit of story about myself in that regard is that I was going to the gym quite often before Katie fell pregnant and, and until I knew I was going to be a father. So, it was very much part of my routine. So if if this is like a new routine for somebody, um, jumping into that and you've, you know, um, your missus is pregnant or she is expecting at any point, then essentially I would just take your time in terms of making decisions like that. Because, you know, using things like resistance bands, like we mentioned, stuff like that, working out from home, if you need to be at your beck and call for your pregnant, the pregnant mother, right, then that might be very, very useful. However, I do believe most people who, most men out there who are working nine to five or working full-time jobs because they need to, you know, relatively speaking, with regards to sus uh, sustain, you know, an income for their household, especially for their new family that is going to be coming in as well. They can have time to structure in gym sessions. They can have time to structure in that. But I wouldn't create any false expectations during that period of time because if you're a new father or if you're, you're a new expecting father, then essentially there's going to be a lot of overwhelm with regards to, you know, have we got this covered? Have we got this? Is she okay? Is the baby okay? There's so much more that you have to think about in general, and there's an extra responsibility that you have to carry. So if you are completely alien to um, starting a regime and you haven't done so before, I would just start with the very simplistic avenue of starting small with things. If that means you you haven't been to the gym ever, and you wanted to go to the gym and to start doing it, focus on your diet and then start going to the gym once a week. Um, if you feel good and you feel relatively okay with that, then start going two times a week. Build up until the point that you feel like you can go three to four times per week. You never, ever really have to go any more than that. Um, in terms of training frequency, in terms of making sure that you feel like you're training everywhere, in, in, training your, your body in, in, in the right manner provided that it's progressive and the exercise selection is, is a current in prop, uh, and set properly, you can actually just function with that. But I would definitely say just start, if you're starting out, just start small and build up to that. And if you're not wanting to go to the gym, you can start by just doing some press ups, start by thinking about your water intake, start by eating a bit more fruit and veg. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to be a new father and you're going to be a good dad, then essentially you want to be there for a long, long time and eating fruit and vegetables, being healthy, sleeping, drinking your water, that is going to be a part of having a healthy, long life, you know? On that, I think um, when you're 
mentioning about getting your going to the gym one, two, four, three times a week or mm -hmm. whatever it be. Um, when you've got a newborn, you feel a level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think, of course you do, towards a newborn and towards your missus. But, um, but to give yourself that little time of like an hour yeah. or, you know, just an hour of the day, if it's, if it's four hours a week, so many hours in a week, yeah. and you add them all up, I think the four hours a week that you, you're able to go to the gym if you went four times is, is so much better for your mental health. Yeah. You can take yourself away and it's it's not it's not disregarding your loved ones and your children. That's not what it's about. What it is about is is coming away, just 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 getting, you know, any sort of stresses in your life and stuff mm. like that. You can take out everything in the gym. Mm. And then when you come back, you go, I've had an hour, I've had an hour and I do feel better. Um I, do you agree? Yeah, I massively agree. You can't serve from an empty vessel, you know. Mm. So I'm, I'm a great believer in, or like, you know, the analogy of you can't, uh, when the, if the train is, if the train, if the plane is falling, then you need to put your eye mask on before helping others. You need to make sure that you help yourself first. Mm -hmm. And as a man, a, a leader of my family, you know, I don't necessarily consider myself a leader, but you know, I, I consider myself a leader in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. You know, I look after myself first before I look after anyone else, because then essentially it gives my family the best chance possible to actually be, be a happy, functioning, healthy family. Yeah. So for example, going to the gym, that is a great thing for me because it's not just for how I look, it's how I feel about the rest of my day or yeah. the rest of my week or yeah. the rest of the projects that I'm looking in. You know, the gym, lifting weights and having that as a regime creates a, creates a sense of discipline that essentially you you it, it's it's hard for it to be matched i i honestly believe like once you once you get into the gym on a regular basis and you get into a routine and it's then it's not necessarily about how you look but going to the gym to try and progress or going to the gym to try and clear your mind it really does kind of affirm create an, uh, some sort of affirmations without any spoken word for the rest of the day and you feel great for doing it yeah you'll naturally feel stronger of course mm. you will you'll yeah. naturally feel stronger you'll naturally feel like like it's easier to do things mm. but at the same time the ultimate thing surrounding sort of being a new dad would mm. would be i get a chance to sort of like put to 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 do the weights and 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 have a second for my own mind mm. to have a second for my own mind and leaving the gym and going back home you go it's it's a nice reset you go back there positive minded if you weren't at the gym you were there all day mm -hmm. it does take its toll i know it does um you know i i, I don't have children mm. but but i do know from talking to to dads that, that that it can take its toll from doing oh i've done five or six days consistently of mm. looking after a child you look them to pieces yeah but to be able to do that for an hour here and there and there, it gives you your own time to sort of reset, to feel better and to leave the gym. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, going a bit more granular, being a dad is the most important thing to me in my whole life. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is. It yeah. like is the most important thing. Growing up, I've always wanted to be a dad, right? So I've always wanted to do other stuff as well. I've wanted to appreciate other things in life, but being a dad, and being there for my son or whatever ch child I have, like if it was a daughter as well, you know, that might be in, in the future, then great. But I've always wanted to be there for my, for my son and always wanted to do that. But I know that from, from just a masculine energy, I need to serve that energy as best as possible in order for me to function as best as I can. Sure. Now that my, my way might be different to yours or whatever, but I do believe like, you know, if you were to wake up at a certain time of day and go to sleep at a certain time of day, if you were to drink water, if you were to get sunlight in your in your eyes quite early in the morning, if you were to limit your alcohol content, not necessarily over drink, you know, all the time, you know, <laughs> if you were to lift weights, if you were to, um, you know, have a journal that you can write into or like, you know, have something that you can kind of just offload your mind with these things that are going to serve you better. You're just going to be a better functioning man for your family and, and even your friends as well, to, or even like your career as well, to a certain degree. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that you do all those things mm -hmm. at once, but if you were serious about being a father, a good family man and a good husband as well, then it's really important to look after yourself as best as possible. And so that you can stay around for longer at your best. 
absolutely you know? continue to be a dad and continue to yeah. be a granddad in the future and stuff like that absolutely. for a long life and a happier life mm. and yeah and everything else in between absolutely mm. yeah definitely i think i think we live in a society where we are driven by visuals mm. um and there's a lot of um benefits going to the gym um physically mm. but i think my my um limited experience of uh you know putting my body through the paces i i really i whenever i work out i'm always my happiest mm. and this is coming from someone who's not a dad but um i feel like for me to be my best around the people that i love i need to be working out yeah i say need that's that comes with it's you know i i i personally need that yeah. um to th- to to be the best possible version of myself i find myself you know if i haven't worked out for a while i find myself in a slump i find my mental um health goes down very rapidly mm. and as soon as i go out for a run long walks um i don't lift weights i don't have a gym membership but you know if i'm outside and i'm doing some sort of exercise whether that be just walking i mean the benefits of walking are unbelievable yeah they are you burn so you can burn so many calories if you're calorie minded on a walk Mm. on an hour's walk which isn't much really if you've got a dog easy you're doing that you're doing that anyway i think it's on average on average for most individuals, like 40 calories per thousand steps. So 40 you, calories a thousand steps? Yeah, so if you okay. hit if you hit 10,000 uh, steps a day, if you hit 10,000 steps a day, that's 400 calories burned. Wow. Which is why sometimes when I set a client, like a target, I'll say, okay, try and do 15,000. Then you're looking at 600 calories extra burnt or even 200 calories on top of the average of what there is that burn, sure. rather than setting them a cardio task. You're so right about the power of walking. I love walking. I, I would walk anywhere if I could, rather than travel anywhere, which is probably why I don't drive as much as I do, to be honest. Mm. But I, I'm a big believer in like, you know, as soon as you go for a walk, you, you, you listen to a podcast, listen to get it off your chest, listen to, um, you know, plug, uh, <laughs> lis- listen to anything though. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting old now. So I like to listen to classical music on my walks. I oh, do. mate. The whole Just time. I travel. Yeah, I the do. whole time. I do. I really do. Literally. If you look at my Spotify playlist, classical music or calm music or something like that and i think that's because of the the amount of chaos that is in my life i say chaos yeah. not in a negative sense but positive sense, chaos positive chaos organized chaos organized you know, chaos there's so much going on like yeah. there's fatherhood there's work there's this there's business i have so much my, my brain you know i i want to appreciate the calm mm-hmm. when i can and going for walks or anything like that can be great for, not just for your physical health which actually studies have shown that it has great effects for your physical health and longevity of life mm-hmm but it is massive for your mental health as well. Yeah. Hugely. And I think the important message here is, is you touched on it before you said about masculine energy Mm. and what we, what we're trying to instill, I think is, 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 is the fact that that a masculine energy in, in going to the gym and stuff like that, it's not about coming out the gym and being able to smash through a wall, eat 50 Snickers, and stand on top of a hill and go, I am the best. Yeah. It's not about that. that it's alpha about alpha male type. Mm. Exactly. That prototype that. That, that is probably preconceived going yeah. into this. And yeah. I maybe think, a new alpha, maybe. Yeah, but I think the alpha male that that we should be goes, I'm on top of what I'm doing of a daytime. I go mm. to the gym and, and it doesn't have to be daily, like I said, but I'm on top of what I'm doing. I open up a little bit more mm. about things I need to speak about, mm. things I should be speaking about and not running away from my problems. And going to the gym for me, like I said, it, it opens doors anyway. Yeah. And like I said last week, I, I go to work and I feel so much better for going to the gym. Instantly, I see my friends. I'm not afraid to smile at them mm. I, because a lot of men shy behind sort of going, yeah, let's, there's no, no, and it's you know what that is. It's because you feel in control of your own life, and mm-hmm. I, I know it sounds so, so silly, like going to the gym. It doesn't. Again, I repeat, it doesn't have to be going to the gym. It has to be some sort of exercise regime. And I do believe what you said, Anthony. It is a need, not a want. You do need, in order for you to feel good about yourself, you need to have a strong exercise regime. Sure. And the benefits of lifting weights or resistance training and progressing in that 
has so many benefits for A, your longevity, B, your bone density health and all that kind of stuff, your heart health, all that kind of stuff. Your strength, muscle, instead of atrophy, you know, aging, age-related diseases and all that kind of stuff has a massive benefit so that you should absolutely hold on hold on to sort of a resistance training if you're cardio bunny and you like to run and stuff like that i would still say throw some weight training in there sure you know or yeah, throw yeah. some resistance yeah. training in there but for for the purpose of like routine and saying something like that as an exercise regime it is so important and crucial that you have that in your everyday life so that you can function as best as possible and feel in control of yourself and not in not worried about what you cannot control. Yeah, you know, absolutely. There's a thing about the yeah. locus of control where you really do focus in on the things that you can control rather than the things that are around you. So if you're at work and things are, you know, there's rumors spreading everywhere or there's things in trouble here or like this pressure here and there, you just focus on what you can control and nine times out of 10, the day will end up out absolutely fine. And you will actually probably show that you did your job to the best of your standard uh, yeah. to, to your yeah. best standard that's, a, you know? that's such a great point i think one of the guys from um the sas series i can't remember i think it's foxy who dares oh. wins who dares wins yeah, yeah the fo <clears throat> foxy i think his name is yes. no no not J jason fox it's the other guy ant middleton that's nah, the other one's it's the, the other one. ant middleton the, jason fox and is dale winton <laughs> dale winton <laughs> Is it, it's not Dale Winton. It's not Dale Winton. It's not Michael Jackson. No, no, no. <laughs> is, it, is it the American one? No, no, no. no it's a, he's a he's a I can't remember. Uh, yeah, can't remember his name. Mm. But uh, someone said to him, "If you had any advice for anyone who is struggling on coping with stress, I think it was about stress." Mm. He said, "They said how how what's the." Under th in under 30 seconds, how would you help people deal with their stress? Mm. And it's just going back to what you just said. He said, make a list of all the things that cause you stress, mm. cross off all the ones that you can't control, and then the ones you can control, do something about it. And I, I think it. that's such a yeah. poignant little point. Is, I love it. And it also, it also comes into, and like, like you just said, is having that control over your own life. Mm. And I think, you know, we're all in our 30s. Yep. I think as we get, as we get older our priorities change yeah and i think we we um maybe take life a little bit more seriously and um i think putting into place and putting into practice taking time for yourself and making sure that you are okay and you are the best you can possibly be for the others around you and for yourself but for the others around you as well yeah is so important hugely we don't, we don't as men put enough emphasis on looking after ourselves. No, we, we don't. Just, we just don't. And that, you know, physically, yes. Yes. Mentally, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you see it at the highest, the highest levels. You see people going through stuff and they just don't talk about it. Yeah. You know. There's often a disregard to talk, to open up about anything. Um, you know... At first, when you start talking to somebody about opening up, they go, well, you, okay, okay. Mm. And they, they will listen. And then eventually it kind of, you go, yeah, this, this is exactly what you need to do. Mm. You know? I think, I think we're, in a, we're in a unique industry, yeah. actually, though, I think where, so. where a lot of, well, we're very, in a very unique industry, but where a lot of the men in this industry are very open. Yeah, we're more open in this industry. We are very, sure. I mean, I, I think so. I mean... The barriers are broken down quite early on, especially if you go to training or something like that, or if, you, if you're if you working and stuff like that, you, you're you more open and more susceptible to to just be open about your feelings and stuff like that. I sure. think I think so. I mean, we, we also are taught to be as open as possible so we can play characters in different ways who have different emotions and who are different, you know, mm. different to us. But... Sure. For the everyday man who isn't in uh, an industry where you have to bear your emotions all the time, what advice would you have for people who who want to open up? Is it, is so. it just a case of just finding someone and talking, or is it is it more is it more um, that systemically we need to, as a society, get better at allowing men to talk? I think it's a I think it's a combination of both, in the sense that. We do need more support across us, you know, across, you know, the systems of where we are, that we live, not just this country, but every country. Um, but 
but we also do need to, I don't know, I think it's genuinely going to be part of our education system in the sense that we are born and raised in an educa ed education system to focus on the academ academics, academia, academia, academia. And then you get the choice to do what you want around about 14, 15 ish. Um, you choose to do certain subjects here and there, but nothing like mental health is touched on. Not really, not to, not, not, not at a scale of GCSE level or A level or degree. Well, you can do a degree in it to be fair, but it's kind of like, you know, again, academic, there's, there's not enough, um, openness for us to be educated in understanding how we feel and when you become a man you are still going through and when you when you grow up hypothetically you know not hypothetically but when you grow up and you're in your 20s or something you know hypothetically yeah. grow up <laughs> you don't um, but you do yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no but when you grow when you grow up you know you you're ultimately left alone you're allowed to spread your wings and you away you go. You could relate this to your finances. You could relate this to your mental health. You could relate this to looking after yourself from a physical point of view, uh, your diet or, you know, you name it. So essentially you are left to your own devices. And then essentially that's where people, like you mentioned, like 22, 23, 24, in an age of social media as well, which has a massive impact as well with regards to it, you are left to kind of suss it out for yourself and we need that extra guidance we need that schooling continuously i would say which is hopefully what this podcast or and other formats of entertainment slash importance and media that you can still probably learn from you know yeah. in terms of like people being able to open up people actually being able to uh, delve into subjects and not be afraid to talk about it um but yeah, ultimately, we we do need to just have a culture change in general that is going to encourage people to open up. And and but from an early age, I do feel I do feel like if you are taught from a young age that it's it's okay for a man to open up, and this is what you're going to feel when you are getting older as well, um, so that you can almost preempt it a little bit. Then yeah, it might it might help people. But I do also believe, and this is a philosophy of mine is that it's not just about thinking yourself to a better mental health. It's not just actually talking yourself to a better mental health. Your actions absolutely speak loud and on words. And part of the reason why I became a fitness coach in the first place was for people to feel better about themselves mm. without having to speak. Now, they, they do need to speak, but you do need to combine it with looking after yourself from a physical point of view as well. Sure. Um, what do you think, Brad? I think... It from the long-term perspective of doing all that stuff, that is brilliant in terms of growing up. It's great. Um, and getting to the age you're at now and thinking about all them things. Mm -hmm. I think in a short-term aspect and going, what do I do? Who do I speak to? Because I am struggling. I think you'd be very, very, very surprised to hear that whoever you turn to speak to about it, even though you think, Nah, I'm not going to burden them with it. When you, when you turn to speak to somebody about something, you'll be very surprised to hear. You'll see a release. You'll see a release on them. They, uh, and, and in order to be able to sit there and speak to them, it will be a weight off your mind. And the person that is receiving your problem will take it on board. They're not going to sit there and go, you're being stupid. You're being stupid, mate, and I'm not going to listen to you. So if you've got a close friend, if you've got a close friend or a relative that almost feels like a friend, because I know at times a relative can often not feel like a friend because they're a relative. Like I wouldn't often turn to, <clears throat> I love you to pieces, mum, but I wouldn't often turn to my mum about, you know, my own personal life because I, I feel like exactly my point is, is I don't want to burden her with it. And I'm sure that if I sat there and opened up to her, she'd be fine with it. She'd be mm. absolutely fine with it. But I think if you've got a close friend or somebody else that you can speak to about it, whether that be male or female, I think at the end result will be, you will come out the other side with another opinion or another something that you could do or the way that you could sort of deal with what you're going through and absolutely voice your concerns about how you feel. And that is the short term fix. It's just about, please, 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 please just speak to people. Just speak to somebody yeah. else about it. Yeah. I think a lot of guys um, are worried about the, the initial 
bringing up of the of the point mm-hmm. and um you know from experience it's 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 not it's not going to be like easy it's not it's not going to be easy to talk no. about and do you know what if it's awkward fuck it yeah like who cares if it's awkward you'll get over it you'll have a pint and you'll maybe in a six months time hopefully in a six months time you'll have a laugh and you'll go oh do you remember that time you know, you know how how I feel so much better for talking about it you know and you know what if it's awkward it's awkward yeah. that's, that's the point you know it, it, it might be awkward and it's so okay, it's okay to feel awkward in that respect because it's not something that naturally you would expect if you're thinking about uh, you know you might we might be sitting across each other and you go I'm not alright or I might be coming to you and go I'm not alright about mm-hmm. this or something yeah. like that it's not naturally initially what you're going to be expecting to be talking about no right so naturally there is going to be a sense of awkwardness but then it's important to be open and, and then therefore be receptive with regards to it as well and yeah it's just mm-hmm. more communication more open communication is going to be the key thing with regards to just being allowed to talk about your problems more so combined think, with everything else and i think an easy way in an easy way in go for a coffee with someone go yeah. for a coffee with your mate go for a coffee with your mate you don't have to drop Whatever is going on in your life at that moment, <clears throat> you know, like it, go for a coffee with your mate. You don't have to drop whatever is going on at the moment. You can, you can, you can just have a little chat with them and have a little catch up with them. And and and, and after five or ten minutes, you might feel a bit more comfortable, mm. you know. Um, and if that that be a couple of drinks for you, go for a couple of drinks because yeah. I can bet your bottom dollar I speak the truth after two or three. Truth and it's a lot it easier a to serum. sort of speak about and like as much as we're an advocate for everything in moderation and alcohol in moderation at a time like that where you need to open up maybe a couple of beers might cut it with your mate mm. you know absolutely and i think i think on the other side of things if you if you see a mate or if you notice a mate isn't quite being themselves or you feel like um you feel like there might be something going on i think there's a really nice rule is asking twice so yeah, you right? Yeah, we know it. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, but are you all right? Yeah. Just and you ask that it's question the, it's twice. The, it's the psychology of di- digging deeper that people ask for the five whys, and so like you ask for why, and you'll give a simple answer. The next time you ask why, and it takes about five to seven whys for you to get to the real answer of mm. things. And it's the same thing with asking if you're all right. You know, if you're asking any kind of question that is a personal one, most of the times you need to reiterate the question in some format. Sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's important. I think yeah. we do. You know, we, we were seeing we're seeing it in the news all the time. Not necessarily in the news, but uh, you know, you hear of it that there yeah. are. It's a bit of a, an epidemic of uh, of men. Uh, I mean, the most the thing that pops into my head the quickest is um is uh, Paddy Pimlet. He uh, he had a fight. Yes, he did. Uh, yes, he did. Of, yeah. I mean, that, a month ago, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and he found out the Hero. morning, the morning of his fight, he found out that one of his best mates had um, unfortunately taken his own life. Mm. And he, you know, he's a lad, like he's a lad's lad, and he literally smashes people's faces for yeah. money. Yeah. And he's talking about it. So mm. if you're, you know, <clears throat> if you're part of a football team, if you're at work, and um, you feel like there's someone that you could potentially go for a coffee with or go for a beer with and just and just just have a word just say look look mate i'm i'm not all right mm. and i just need you to listen yeah and then it's the responsibility of the other person literally just to listen the important thing is they will listen yeah <clears throat> they will listen they have to. if you tell your mate i'm not all right <clears throat> i need you to listen if you're scared to do that don't be that is the, probably the safest question yeah i'm not all right i need you to listen your friend will 100% i can categorically say this will listen yeah and if they don't they're not your friend they're not your exactly friend that exactly that and then nut them yeah nut, nut them yeah. knock them out knock their dad out yeah you know, knock, their dad out. <laughs> knock their dad out yeah. yeah if you haven't watched the first episode then you'll un- you won't understand knock your dad that. out so of the week the first episode you'll understand it i mean we said last week brad you did which is incredible. Uh, seven kg in twelve weeks. Yeah, eighty-five to seventy-eight. Which that's is was, which yeah. is meant that that's that's a really lovely amount yeah. to be able to it's, lose. It's a dedicated amount. For yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. For sure. And uh, that that comes with um, yeah, like you just said, dedication. So I think I, yeah, go on, go on. I just think that was determination for change. That was determination for a bit of a change in my life, um, and it was never at any point 
to my detriment. Mm. I never thought that at any point I was going, oh, I'm committing my life to this and I'm not committing it to breathing. Like, like the whole 12 weeks was such an organic, natural kind of like easy process through underneath Josh mm. that, that, you know, it, it, it worked and helped me set me out on my goals, you know? Um, the whole seven kilo thing, it wasn't top of my list at the start of it. I didn't expect to lose seven kilo. Mm. And after 12 weeks, I went, wow, I've lost seven kilo. I feel amazing. Um, and therefore, you know, your goals that you set in 12 weeks time, I want to kind of feel like this. I want to look like this. In turn, other things happen. Other things happen in your life. Um, and as I touched on last week, there's a lot more happening in my life right now than 12 weeks ago um, for better, you know. Um, and I put it down to the goals that uh, and the way that we want to go and, and where we want to go. And, you know, it's not essentially going, I want a million pounds in 10 years. Yeah. Uh, the branches off of that, of how you do it and how you get to that are, are evident. I think what's just happened. Yeah. You're absolutely right in the sense that from what I originally kind of put in is that there is a lot more about the process and enjoying the process than it is about the arrived destination. Holy. Of the goal. Holy. And you can then, when you can separate that, you can actually dig deeper in terms of understanding what types of goals that you want to have. Now, for me personally, I believe that you should separate them into four. And I like to classify them as the four Bs, which is body, balance, being, and brain. No, business and brain. My bad. Um, body, so, body, you body, say again? Four Bs, body, balance, business, and brain. Mm -hmm. So body... People can then focus on like, oh, what I would like to do, right, for my body if I was wanting to lose 7 kg in 12 weeks, right? Whatever that is, that can be your goal for the next 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then you can relate that or think about that aside from balance. So balance could be what does your life look like, you know, with that said. Your business or career or professionalism or anything like that can be any goals within that. It can be just stay employed or get a new get a new job or get a new client or anything like that. And then another one could be, what was it? Body, balance, brain. brain. So brain can be things like your mental health. So it's kind of related to the body, but like it could be like meditating or stuff like that. If you were to categorize it into those four Bs, you're then able to then actually look at it from a bigger scale of going, this is how I want to live my life. And this is how I'm going to enjoy my life because I'm enjoying the pursuit I'm not necessarily att attempting all these things at once, but trying to marry them together. You can dig deeper in terms of understanding as to like, why do you want to achieve, the, achieve those things? And then you ask yourself the five whys as like, you know, digging deeper and then you can give you like a little roadmap and stuff like that. We can get into that in another podcast, really. But the main thing is that you, you try and actually separate why do you want to actually lose 7 kg? Why do you want to actually get a new client? Why do you want to do all those things? that will bring clarity as to how you live your life because you'll understand the reason why you're doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where most people get it wrong in, in the sense of goal setting is that they set a goal because they think that when they achieve that, they're going to be happier. Mm -hmm. And it, it's most likely not the case. It's the things that got you there is what's making you happier, really. Yeah. You know, I think it's so. about being flexible. I think, mm. you know, you may, you may set yourself a goal and you may or may not get there. Hopefully you do get there, but... Mm like we just said, you'll find goals that you're reaching along the way that you'd never even set out for. Absolutely. So your goals, I'm putting words in your mouth now, just for, for example, your goal might have been, I want to be leaner, so therefore I feel better about myself. Mm. Or I feel more energetic. Mm. But then you lose 7 kg in, a, in 12 weeks, you're like, okay, well, in the next 12 weeks, I want to lose another 7. Yeah. You know, and then there's another goal that's just sort of like, like you just said, sort of like sprouted off that's how trees like grow tree, that's exactly. how trees grow yeah. and we stand there as big oaks opening up about yeah. things blowing in the wind and there's your metaphor for the day yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening today uh thanks for watching today if you enjoyed today's podcast be sure to give it a like give it a comment and subscribe if you're listening to it on spotify or apple podcasts then be sure to rate it as you wish. Five stars. Um, five stars, please. As you wish. Um, there's going to be a lot more coming up with regards to just talking all kinds of things, getting off your chest. Uh, we're talking fitness, diet, and lifestyle. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, but yeah, we just got in a little bit of a, a ramble with regards to things. But that's what this podcast is all about. It's just being able to sit down and have a chat 
and just kind of open up as the men that we are. And if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section. If there's anything you want us to cover, um, please do do let us know if there's anything you want to talk about or um, any uh, subjects you feel like would be good to hear our opinions on. Let, leave, let, let us know. Yeah. Ultimately, get it off your chest. Yeah.